Stellar Crown promises to be one of the most impactful Pokemon TCG sets thanks to the new Stellar Terra Pokemon EX, the amazing Zero Under Depth Stadium, new Ace Specs with Sparkling Crystal and Great Big Tree, as well as powerful support just like Crispin and Briar. This set will not only bring out new powerful archetypes such as Aria Zero Terrapagos EX based decks with all the powerful colorless support in Noctowl, Fan Rotom, Buvalent, and Glass Trumpet, but it will power up existing decks to bring them to a whole new power level and make them that much more threatening and powerful. Whether it is one card inclusion or a whole deck getting upgraded and making a powerful comeback, in this video we will take a look at 8 different decks that get direct upgrades with the Stellar Crown set. Don't forget that you can watch videos 24 hours earlier if you become a channel member by following the link in the description below. This kind of support helps me continue to create content like this, so please consider becoming a channel member if you enjoy the content. First, let's talk about Charizard EX. This deck has been consistently at the top for a while now, and it looks to continue with that in the Stellar Crown metagame. With the brand new Battle League decks coming out in November, I think this means many new players will be taking a dip for the first time into competitive Pokemon TCG with this deck. Having said that, this deck's biggest upgrade is thanks to Briar. This brand new supporter does the following. You can use this card only if your opponent has exactly two prize cards remaining. During this turn, if your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack used by your Terra Pokemon, take one more prize card. This card reminds me a bit of the old Beast Ring, which was used to power up Ultra Beast Pokemon, but only worked when your opponent had three or four prizes. Briar is the same with a two prize restriction, and is a very real threat, which should force everyone to reevaluate their prize maps when playing against Charizard with a normal 2 to 2 price map now being more dangerous due to Briar's extra price card. While Briar is not at the power level of the old ADP, which provided an extra price card after every KO for the whole game, it certainly helps make Charizard EX an even more powerful threat overall. While Briar is a card that you can expect in pretty much 100% of Charizard EX decks, the new Great Big Tree A spec is a new option that they have to help them in setting up, as the card reads, once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for a stage 1 Pokemon that evolves from one of their basic Pokemon in play, and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it. If they do, they may search their deck for a stage 2 Pokemon that evolves from that stage 1 Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it. Then, that player shuffles their deck. You can't use this card to evolve a basic Pokemon during your first turn, or in a Pokemon that was put into play this turn. This is a pretty powerful effect, especially on a non-supporter card, which explains why it is limited to 1 per deck. If a Charizard deck decides to play this card, it will likely benefit from playing Pidgeotto, and perhaps to Charmeleon, to make sure it really gets to take advantage of it. Whilst I have seen this card be included in some successful decks over in Japan, I'm not sure it's better than Prime Catcher or on First Stamp in the grand scheme of things, as Forward Candy will do the job just fine. The best thing about Briar is that thanks to Dusclops and Dustmore's Curse Blast, you can actually force your opponent to have two prize cards even if they are actively trying to avoid being in that position making it an even more serious threat. Next up, it seems like these star Pokemon are having a last stand before they all rotate next year, as Legacy Energy and Teal Mask Ogre Pony X in the Twilight Masquerade set gave new life to Lugia V-Star and Regidrago V-Star, and now Area Zero will do the same for Palkia V-Star. Subspace Swell does 60 plus 20 more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and whilst before your maximum damage output was 260, now it goes all the way up to 320. Of course, as soon as your opponents see a Palkia V, they will likely try to manage their bench to avoid KOs, but now all the big basic Pokemon are within reach for yourself with a full bench of 8 and one of theirs for a grand total of 240, or V-Stars if they have 3. This also doesn't factor in the fact that a lot of other decks will likely also play Area 0 and you're bound to run into mirror matches too. Therefore, benches are about to be a lot bigger, and that means Palkia V-Star will become a lot more threatening and the bonus of Star Portal means both Raid and Greninja, Wallspring Ogre Pony X and Chimpao EX can become threats out of the blue as well. These three Pokemon are natural inclusions in Palkia Vistar decks as they either provide draw power in Greninja's case, is a Terra Pokemon therefore it activates Area Zero's bonus bench effect in Ogre Pond's case, and helps find energy to power up and draw in Chimpao EX's case. All of this combined with Irida give this deck incredible synergy with all these water type cards. Now, as far as deck lists go, these are all over the place. We are seeing lists with 2-2, two, 3-3 two, three, three, and 4-3 lines of Palkia V-Star, and a wide supporting cast that includes a colorless package with Terrapagos EX as a backup attacker, and also ideal Area Zero user, and Noctowl for support. Remember the Palkia and Tillian deck anybody? There's also grass-based variants, with Tillmask Ogre Pony X fulfilling the role of Terra Pokemon for Area Zero. 
powerful attacker against Charizard EX and Roaring Moon EX, and opens up the possibility to have a turn 1 attack with Iron Leaves EX. One more straightforward version also includes Noctowl, but something a lot of them have in common is the use of Iron Valiant EX's Tachyon Bits ability, and plenty of switching effects in order to help reach higher numbers even if opponents try to limit their bench to reduce top space swells damage. I myself haven't played with any of these yet, but as the set gets closer to releasing on PCG Live, I'll be sure to update you on which is my favorite variant. Now, many of you might notice that Cornerstone Ogre Pony X is included in many Palkia V-Star lists and might be puzzled as to why that is, even though there is no fighting energy to attack with it whatsoever. Well, the reason for this is, it's one of the most difficult Terra Pokemon to take down, so an opponent who is trying to knock out your Terra Pokemon to disable Area 0 will have a lot more trouble dealing with that as opposed to the other Ogre Pony Xs or Terra Pogas EX for example. I don't think Palkia V-Star will be the new best deck in the format, but it certainly is going to be a powerful new threat that you will need to account for in their preparation for Dortmund Regionals and beyond. And now, moving on to one of my favorite cards is Dragapult EX. This is the one that feels like it's upgraded the most, thanks to various cards, but the most crucial one is almost certainly the Sparkling Crystal Aspect tool. Reducing Dragapult EX's awkward Psychic and Fire Energy attack cost to a single energy, either Fire or Psychic, whichever is attached, is huge and makes it much easier to set up through Arvin, just like Charizard EX is now, that you can do that. Of course, if the Sparkling Crystal is prized, that's an issue, and it will happen about 10% of the time. However, it's definitely the right A spec, and might be the missing piece for Dragapult EX to become a bit more viable in this metagame. The two other important cards are Crispin and Briar. Crispin also helps in the issue of powering up Dragapult EX. Through the single supporter, you get both the two correct energy and the bonus attachment all in one go, no more awkward Mel or Zatu builds are necessary. Of course, by using Crispin as your supporter of choice, you won't be able to disrupt with Iono or target something on the bench through boss, maybe through Cantercatcher. But Crispin and Sparkling Crystal solve one of Dragapult EX's biggest issues, which is simply having it ready to attack on a regular basis. The final piece for this deck from Stellar Crown is Briar. As Dragapult EX is a Terra Pokemon, it can even combine with the extra price from Briar with the damage counters from Phantom Dive and perhaps even Dusclops or Dustmar to take 4 maybe even 5 prizes in a single turn. These two help Dragapult EX force an opponent into having 2 prizes remaining just like they do for Charizard decks, making for some very cool endgame scenarios and comeback possibilities. While these 3 cards are a substantial upgrade to Dragapult EX decks, I'm not sure it's still quite on the level of Regidrago V-Star yet. The next deck that gets upgraded with Stellar Crown is Raging Bolt X. This deck continues to be a powerful threat, that is arguably the best deck at one KOing anything in the game cost effectively thanks to Professor Sarah's Vitality and Teal Mask Ogre Pony X. Now with Stellar Crown, you have the possibility to have more benched Pokemon with Area 0 since Ogre Pony X is a Terra Pokemon, meaning now you can fit all the amazing support Pokemon to feel your heart's content. Imagine a field of an active Raging Bolt X, two benched Raging Bolt X for backup, three Teal Mask Ogre Pony X to draw and power get energy into play, Fezzandipity X and Squakabilly X are used on turn 1 to help you set up, and Radiant Greninja for more draw support. Sounds like a dream, right? Well, now it can become a reality. Whilst all the bench space might not be necessary, it's certainly nice to have the option. And with a bigger bench, perhaps you can play other supporting Pokemon such as Hoot Hoot and Noctowl 2 for more dedicated search for any necessary resources each turn. And with more target search, there's two more cards that I feel could be a good option for this deck. The first would be Briar. Seeing how you already have a big focus on Teal Mask Ogre Pony X, having Briar in the deck makes it a more potent threat and a better backup attacker against single price decks perhaps. And in addition to this, Crispin might also be a nice inclusion for this deck, as it's almost like a 5th Professor Sada. It gets you that guaranteed extra energy attachment, and an extra energy either for your Raging Bolt DX's Bellowing Thunder attack, or a Grass Energy to draw an extra card with. Whilst a lot of the successful decks over in Japan have featured some of these new cards in them, the more straightforward build of Raging Bolt DX has also been successful, with no new cards added either. Whichever path you decide to take, Raging Bolt DX is likely to continue to be a very powerful threat at the very top of the game. Our next deck is Gardevoir EX. Coincidentally, just like Twilight Masquerade brought Monkey Dory for the deck and gave it a whole new dimension, Stellar Crown will give these decks the new Gravity Orb tool. It reads, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is in the active spot, each player's active Pokemon's retreat cost is colorless more. Increasing the retreat cost of a Pokemon is a big deal, as it will make opponents think twice of who they promote after you take a KO, possibly leading to mistakes if someone forgets and just promotes a Pokemon with 3 retreat out of force of habit such as Mew EX, and suddenly realizes it needs an energy to retreat. 
However, the best use for this card is when combined with Screamtail. Ideally, you want to use Countercatcher to bring up something that has at least one retreat cost, which will now go up to two thanks to the Gravity Orb, and then you power up Screamtail with Gardevoir EX's Psychic Embrace in order to use Roaring Scream to snipe a Pokémon on the bench. This will make it complicated for an opponent to get the right Pokémon in the active to KO you once again, possibly opening up the same play over consecutive turns. Gravity Orb is a cool new tool for Gardevoir EX players, but Prime Catcher, Switch, Switch Card and even Petra on DX's subjugating chain's ability can help players switch out of its annoying effect. The next deck to look at is Maridon EX. If you've played with this deck before, you know how important and crucial proper bench management is. But now with Area Zero, you can have a lot more bench Pokémon in order to have the correct Pokémon to deal with whatever your opponent is throwing at you, or to simply have all the supporting Pokémon you need, such as Vesendipity X, Radiant Greninja and Mew EX, in order to protect yourself from disrupting cards like Iono or Unfurst Stamp. The biggest question for Miraidon EX comes down to which Terra Pokémon to include in order to get the bonus effect of Area Zero. And whilst Terrapagos EX or Cornerstone Ogre Pony EX could be a good idea, the best is likely simply Mewtwo EX. It will never attack as you will never play Psychic Energy in a deck that wants to maximize the odds of hitting Electric Generator for 2 energy each time, but the fact that you can search for it with Mariah and EX's Tandem Unit ability is enough to justify having a copy or two in your deck for Area Zero activation. Coming up next is the World Champion deck, Iron Thorns EX. Unfortunately, the only possible inclusion is Gravity Orb, as nothing else really helps the deck do its disrupting game plan any better. Of course, Increasing your opponent's retreat could make it even more difficult for them to ever get an attack off and could open up some stalling strategies previously unavailable. But it competes with Future Booster Energy Capsule and even Handheld Fan as tool options for Iron Thorns EX, so don't expect this card to ever be more than a single copy in these decks. And the last deck in our list is Izui and Zoroark V-Star. I know there's a lot of fans of this card, including myself. And if it's ever finally going to be good, it has to be with Area Zero, which perfectly synergizes with its Tricking Curse attack. It deals more damage for each Pokémon that has any damage counters on it. And now you can have up to 9 total damaged Pokémon in play, meaning a potential 450 damage cap. The biggest challenge for this deck is getting that damage on all Pokémon, given how you now have to run Area Zero as opposed to Gabe Jobog for the quick self damage. The main ways to do this will be through Dodrio's Zooming Draw ability, which gives you extra cards too, Gengar's Netherworld ability, and finally Damage Bomb, in order to spread those damage counters around to anyone missing any to further increase your damage output. Now, the best part about this is that you don't need all 9 Pokémon with damage to reach for KOs. As with 7 damage Pokémon in play and a double turbo energy, Tekken Curse does exactly 330 damage, the current highest of all meta decks with Charizard EX and the possible future Hydrapple EX. And before you run to the comments to yell at me, because technically there are Pokémon with 340 HP, like Garganacol EX or Venusaur EX, we all know they suck, so we don't care about those. And even if we did, just get 8 damaged Pokémon and problem solved. With Fan Rotom potentially helping getting Doduo, Dodrio, Hoot Hoot and Noctal for a full setup on turn 1, this deck could finally see itself compete once Stellar Crown becomes tournament legal. This should cover all the potential upgrades for the brand new competitive options coming from Stellar Crown. How broken will Area Zero be? What other undiscovered ways to abuse a bench of 8 are still left? Will Palkia V-Star compete with the top tier decks? Regardless of what happens, this set will certainly affect the format, and so I will continue to be covering all the changes and exciting discoveries, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that going up either. I hope this video has been useful for you, and I'd love to know what you think of these decks and the Stellar Crown set in general. Thanks for watching and until next time. If you want to support the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Potan Store for your online codes, 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming, and 10% off on your aluminum accessories at TC Evolutions. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab, then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Card Market, and Dragon Shield. ¿Eres de México y necesitas cartas de Pokémon? Busca Hyper Bean Cards en Facebook e Instagram. Y si estás en Tijuana, búscalos en el local C27 en el Centro Comercial Otay.